Good morning and welcome to our service of Holy Communion from St Michael's, Galmington, um, on the Feast of Christ the King. We've been having some Wi-Fi problems here today, so hopefully it will continue to work throughout our worship together, wherever we are. Um, locally or further afield. Going to take a moment of quiet as we begin. Maybe you've already listened to your first piece of music, um, which is Jubilate. Everybody, maybe, maybe you've just uh, come to it a little bit like me and quite flustered. Um, but we're here together. We're here to worship, um, both on Facebook and on YouTube this morning. Let's use our prayers if we have them in front of us. Uh, if we don't, don't worry, that's absolutely fine. You can pray with us wherever you are uh, and in your own ways. So we have been called into the pastures of God where there is nurture, a place to rest, safety and kindness among all. So let us draw near in the goodness of God to be with each other. And to praise the shepherd who has gathered us here. Amen. We say the words together of the gathering prayer if we have them in front of us. God, we have been a scattered people roaming, looking for places to call home. You have called us home, gathered us in, given us a land of belonging where all are welcome. You have sought us out, brought us in and held us in this great story. Amen. We say those words of approach to, we come to you, people who are hungry, people who are thirsty, people, strangers, imprisoned, exposed, knowing that you have come to us too in the same guises, in our brokenness, welcome us and open up our defences as we come to you. O Lord of many guises. Amen. Together we say our prayer of confession. Truly we say to you that we have seen the broken and have not been moved to compassion. Truly we say to you that we have heard people mourning and we have not given them our time. Truly we say to you that we have witnessed oppression and we have not raised our voices. Truly we say to you that we have seen the stranger and said not a word. God hiding in all strangers all around us. We are truly sorry for what we have done and for what we have not done. We ask you to deepen your welcome in us so that we might deepen our welcome around us. Amen. The Lord our God says, I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injuries and I will strengthen the weak. Indeed, the Lord is good. God's love and mercy are forever. Sisters and brothers, your sins are forgiven, so be at peace. Say in the alternate verses, a modern version of Psalm 100. With all the earth, we join in thunderous celebration, Lord, raising the roof as we come into your presence, singing, coming gladly to offer you our devotion. Lord, we know that you are God. You made us and we belong to you. We are your people fed and cared for by you alone. Your gates are open to us. Thank you. In your presence, we sing your praises. We name you as deserving all the credit and all the thanks. 
You are the best, Lord. Your love is rock solid and always will be. Down through the ages, you keep your word and you stick by us. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the church in the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet. Who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. I think our second piece of music is uh, All Creatures of Our God and King. And then we have our reading from Ezekiel 34, 11 to 16, then 20 to 24. God the True Shepherd. For thus says the Lord, I will seek and I will search for my sheep. I will seek them out. The shepherds seek their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep. So I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from the places to which they've been scattered on the day of cloud and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and I will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel and by water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pastures and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture and they shall lie down in good grazing land for they shall feed on such rich pasture as on the mountains of Israel. And I myself will be the shepherd of the sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord. I will seek out the lost and I will bring back the strayed and I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep because they have pushed with flank and shoulder and butted all the weak animals with your horns until you have scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between my sheep and sheep. And I will set them up and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. And he shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. That's like this is a really strong image there for me, because I've I've seen that happening, um, and that there are those sheep that when there's feed or pasture, but particularly in our context where there's there's feed being laid out for them on the ground or or hay and racks for them, there are those that will always dig right in and they'll push in and they'll get there and they'll get fatter and fatter and fatter and and they'll thrive in their time. And, and then there will be those who will always be on the outside, always be holding back. Um, and I think it's a really, a really strong image, that, that idea that there are those that are on the outside within society and within the world who are deemed to be the weakest. Um, And I guess, you know, it's that thing of of who do we consider? Even if we don't consider ourselves to be them, who do we consider are those who are are cast out or who are pushed aside? and it can come in different contexts, you know. I mean, I think, I think that very clearly for us around us, we see, um, we see all sorts of prejudices, and sometimes we don't actually see it as something that happens to each of us. But then we we consider the prejudice of ageism, and during this lockdown, again, we've considered how those who are older have been marginalised. Um, Within the, the Church of England at the moment, a, um, a book and a course has just been put out, Living in Love and Faith, and that's looking at the way in which um, 
LGBT people are incorporated uh, or not within our churches. And, you know, for myself, I feel um, incredibly blessed uh, to be where I am and with the people that I'm with. Um, but for so many, there are still those who are butted out and ostracized um, simply because of who they love. And this course is something that is to go some way to enabling conversations between churches of different traditions uh, within the deaneries and the diocese uh, of the Church of England. Um, you know, it might be our, our quick our quickness to um, become frustrated with the young people we see on the streets because they're walking in groups and we don't feel we can be. I just love the fact that God says in this reading that I am with those who have been marginalised in whatever capacity. I'm with those who are on the outside. Um, and we just kind of give thanks to God for being a God of the outsider because at all times, uh, at different times, each one of us will have felt that way. Um, but we also ask God to guide us into ways in which we, like his servant David, um, as a church, as representatives of that same God here on earth, how we might um, speak into those situations, how we might feed and bind up the wounds and strengthen the weak uh, and and sustain um, each person, those of us on the inside and those of us on the outside, those of us who feel strong and those of us who feel marginalised at this time. A consideration as we go into that fallow period of waiting and watching as we approach Advent next week. I'm going to read my second reading here. Um, Ephesians 1, 15 to 23. I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love towards the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you might know what is the hope for which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the work, working of his great power, God but put this power to work in Christ. He raised him from the dead and he seated him as his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority or power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put things under his feet and he has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body is the fullness of him who fills all in all. Because Christ is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and the filler of all things. Do you know what, if our days and our thoughts and our, our moments and our lives are, they begin and end with Christ, they are filled with the knowledge of him, then we're on a good footing. Anyway, on to Matthew's Gospel. Matthew 25, 31 to 46, the judgment of the nations. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. For the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will put the sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left. And then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you that are blessed by my father and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry 
and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. And I was in prison and you visited me. And then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And then he will say to those on his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me naked and you did not give me clothing sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? And then he will answer, truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it for the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteousness into eternal life. And this is the gospel of Christ. Um, I have a thought concerning this reading. Um, and for me, who quite likes writing a sermon it was really hard when I was best part through a sermon not to be putting it all on paper um but there are a few things that have come to light in in our area at the moment in Taunton and um just wanted to put those out to you um if you're in this area if you don't live in this area or if you're um somewhere else consider um where it is that's asking for help near where you live or where you're able to uh, be part of um, maybe in some ways ministering to those who need it at this time. So you start with where the, where the sermon was beginning uh, and then it quickly goes into a plea rather than a sermon. Uh, I watched a film the other day, the first of the Christmas movies, and it was called Christmas Inheritance. It was one of those stories about an owner of a, a big gift company, uh, his daughter going back to the town where the company started, and she needed to go incognito uh, so as no one treated her any differently. She has to go to learn some lessons, and ultimately she does this, and she does it by serving and not being treated differently. Um, it was okay as feel good films go, and I'm not a film critic at this moment. So, you know, I'd say if you were wanting to watch something that'll make you slightly smile at Christmas time, this one's okay. Um, but it did provide a good opener for the thought. Twice, Christ the King is introduced to us incognito within our lectionary today. Both times he comes in some way. Uh, in the form of shepherd, uh, but both times he comes teaching servanthood and compassion. In the gospel, Jesus from his throne recalls a time that he in the guise of one of the most needy in our world was ministered to, or indeed overlooked by the pious. And it's a strange text as it sits outside the laws of tents. It appears eschatological and end times whilst preaching to the present day audience that he had in front of him and at the same time providing a clarion call to us in the future as to how we must execute ourselves. It's clear and it's timeless and I guess it makes a text of paramount importance. God is saying two things within our scriptures. First he is saying this, that he is hidden among those who are most in need that he hangs out with them, that they're part of him, that he is part of them. Second, that those most in need are of great importance to God. So in Ezekiel, we're reminded that God provides a model and sets a precedent for such care and consideration of those most in need in our world. God manifests as a shepherd, not just to the fattest sheep in the flock, but also to those who are pushed away from that choicest feed that we mentioned earlier. 
And I could give a sermon today, which you maybe would have heard many times over, concerning servanthood and sacrifice uh, coming from the king. Or I could simply put forward a few ways in which we at this time can serve our community locally. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, I've had a number of emails from various people or conversations on the phone um, this week. And, and this is kind of pretty much the crux of it. Um, Beesom are hoping to be able to deliver Christmas hampers to many of the individuals and the families referred to them by social workers and other agencies. These hampers are going to contain extras. And um, when I was talking with Helen Clegg about it, she said, hopefully some more luxury items. Suggested items for the hampers are these Christmas cake, Yule log, mince pies, chocolate, sweet, shortbread, Christmas pudding, selection boxes, Christmas crackers, hot chocolate, tins of biscuits, savoury biscuits and toiletries. Due to the current lockdown restrictions, contributions can be currently delivered. So in our context, can be delivered to St Michael the Archangel Church Foyer on Tuesday and Thursdays between 9.30 and 1.30 when the church is open for private prayer. If you do think that you can make a donation to this, um, then the donations need to be made by Sunday the 13th of December. So that's three Sundays time, so that they can be put into the boxes and they can be collated and they can be taken out to people that need them most in the community. So that's one of the things that we've been asked to do specifically. Um, then a little different, but something that we were involved with last year um, at St Michael's Home Instead, so in the Comey Trade Centre, are organising Santa for a senior again this year. They're asking people to donate gifts of up to the value of £5, hats, gloves, scarves, slippers, socks, uh, toiletries, calendars, diaries, hand warmers, wheat bags that go in the microwave, food gifts, nice jams or chutneys, uh, chocolates, biscuits, etc. The gifts will then be distributed by the Home Instead staff to older members of local community who may be on their own at Christmas and might not otherwise receive a gift this year. Please ensure that these gifts are wrapped and labelled accordingly for male or female participants, or if it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Um, the other thing that Home Instead have said is that obviously we might know of ourselves, members of the community who will fall into that situation by way of knowing through church or through local community. Um, and they would also love those names and be able to give gifts, take gifts to those people also. Um, so it's not simply, simply gifts that we are giving for Home Instead clientele. These will go out to people in conversation with local members of the community who will be able to say, no, we know somebody who would love that. So please feel free to give gifts. Again, what we'll do is we'll put a box and we'll make it quite clear that the Home Instead gifts go into that because obviously there'll be different things and obviously as well a different demographic if they're like a, you know, if you've got an item of, of gloves or something to to the other ones so we'll make sure that there are two separate spaces for the um be some gifts and for home instead it doesn't mean you have to choose one or the other if you feel able you both are, are there um this all started this week with cannons grove um rough sleepers housing project up um over troll so pretty much between us and troll really uh needing volunteers to help with food preparation between 11 and 2 30 each day covering lunches um, what I've written down is initially there was an influx of volunteer support, which has pretty much dwindled to one woman from Troll. Um, this task would be anything from heating up ready meals to preparing toasties and clearing up after lunch. Uh, but it would be also a brilliant opportunity for you to meet folk that you might not otherwise meet. They'll obviously be they'll have safe social distancing and, and sanitizing procedures in place in that in that um, environment. And. If you would like to, um, it would be really good. One of the things that I've noticed as well is a few of the few of the folk who are living up there at the moment have come down and used the bookstore, and that's been really, really good to be able to have a chat with a few of the guys that are up there. Um, so, again, it's, it's different people in our community who we might be able to meet, but at this time 
particularly uh, because of COVID-19, but also the onset of winter that we might be able to offer something specific to. All right, next one, walking nativity. Uh, we do need volunteers to dress up as characters from the nativity story uh, and stand in a given spot for maybe an hour at a time. So it's within our exercising time who can stand at a given spot dressed as a nativity character. It doesn't matter how old you are. That's fine, because what you'll get is a crib sheet with uh, a little bit about yourself, but you can ad lib as well. Um, but also we... Uh, the children from Bishop Henderson School, all of the classes will be walking around that the area, meeting different nativity characters, asking them their stories. And then hopefully for some of the older students, they might be putting that into some kind of newspaper article or something like that um, about the birth of Christ. We've got to think of different ways to be uh, and to enable that story of the nativity to get across to the young people, but also to our community. Uh, and if you feel like you could be a character, I've got a couple of characters already. Um, if you feel like you could be a character, that would be fabulous. Um, and I'm thinking, obviously, as it's a Bishop Henderson thing, it might be nice to offer that out there to St. George's as well. So um, anyway, uh, yes, that's that one. Um, and then... There, there are other things. Um, there are still, I am going to get some things out there. Christine Musgrave said she's still making decorations. Um, little does she know that I've got about 100 of these, so decorations can be made. Um, but, but people are still out there and are still making things that can be sold uh, in lieu of our, our Christmas fair this year to raise some funds for church. So if you're not really feeling like getting out and about, but you feel like you could make something and maybe sell it as part of the Christmas stuff, that would be wonderful. Um, and also, I don't know what Pam and Roger have got in mind, but I know that they're beginning to get a, a nativity display, a bit like the, uh, the Remembrance, the Easter, the Harvest displays that we've had outside of church. So there might be some call on folk to... Um, enable people to see a wee bit more of what Christmas is really about through that. There's so much going on and there will be in your area and I know that it's not possible for everyone uh, for various reasons to be able to get out and about and this is where I kind of go back into the sermon because it's a reminder again that that phone call, the email, the Christmas card uh, pot potentially purchased from Christine Musgrave or Penny Parham um, but I'm not, I'm, you know, I, do you know what? I feel like I'm on QVC today. I've, I've done a, a sales pitch. I've done it, done a, um, oh no, then that was film night, wasn't it as well? A bit of a film review. Anyway, um, I realised that not everybody's going to be able to get out and about. And not even to make those phone calls and things like that. But it's just this opportunity to, to pray for, to think of, to be aware of other people and other people's needs. These are all the things that count. And when we're given these scriptures of a God who is king, but who is right there, right there in the thick of life with every one of us, but, you know, with, with each of us in our deepest needs, but with those for whom deep need seems to run along with life, um, all of these things, the prayer and the thought, the phone call, the card, they, they all count. Absolutely all count. And I've marvelled um, really since I've been at St Michael's as to how the lectionaries provided readings each week that relate directly to what's going on in the world. Um, and this week was no different. So as I was preparing my talk, these requests were coming streaming in and it seemed right to stop theorising and maybe to respond directly to what was right in front of us. So this year on the Festival of Christ King, we are called to go incognito into our community as servants of the King, servants of the Servant King, servants of the Shepherd King. Amen. Just for a moment, think... Uh, as we move into prayer, just think for a moment of the gratitude that you have for something that you've received 
from a neighbour or a parishioner, professional carer, complete stranger. Just the thing to say thanks for. Um, If you want to, even in your own home, say thank you out loud for these moments of human intuition. And then we'll move into prayer. So on the Feast of Christ the King, we pray for Oh, I'm going to say what we're going to say. Loving God by your spirit and our response is bring in your kingdom. So loving God by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. So we pray for the coming of God's kingdom. You sent your son to bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, freedom to the captives and salvation to your people. Anoint us with your spirit, rouse us to work in his name. Loving God, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to bring help to the poor and freedom to the oppressed. Loving God, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us out to speak out and to proclaim your justice in the world. Your justice in our communities. Loving God, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. So send us out to tell the world the good news of your healing love. Think particularly of our hospital staff at the moment, our medical staff, our paramedics, community nursing staff, the physios, the OTs, the people that want to be in people's homes and getting them up and moving again. Pray for all those in healing work, for all those people of faith who are in healing ministries. Loving God, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to those who mourn, to bring joy and gladness instead of grief. Loving God, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to proclaim that the time is here for you to save your people. Loving God by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Lord of the church, hear our prayer and make us one in mind and heart to serve you in Christ our Lord. Amen. Just for a moment, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say the peace to one another. Uh, and then if you need to, I'm going to commend you to go and get some bread and some wine uh, or whatever you have in the house that, that kind of um, you feel that you can use for communion today. Uh, and we will break bread with one another. So, Lord, part of the bringing in of your peace is the bringing in of justice. When we know that we are cared for, we feel at peace. When we know that we are safe, we feel at peace. So, Lord, we ask that we might be bringers of your peace to our world and that you might give us your peace and your sanctuary at this time and so may the peace of the Lord be always with you 
and also with you. So if you have your, your prayer in front of us, then use it. If you don't, then I reckon you'll know a vast number of the words anyway by now. So let us lift up our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise, O God, for your love is forever faithful from age to age you are our maker to whom we belong for you created the earth and you shepherd all who live in it when your people were scattered and oppressed you promised through your prophets to gather them home and to feed them on the rich pasture of their own land in your child jesus the promises have been fulfilled a shepherd king who seeks out the lost and binds up the wounded when he was killed for you, you raised him from the dead and seated him at your side in the heavenly places. Now your immeasurable power is at work in us who believe to clothe us in compassion and righteousness so that we might be fit for this kingdom for which you prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Therefore, we join our voices with all you have created, all you have loved, all you sustained all you sustain, to pray to you saying, holy, holy, holy God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you for your life manifest in our brother Jesus, bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh, whose life, death and resurrection reveal you fully, your love for humanity, your desire for freedom, your passion for justice. We remember that Jesus gathered at table with his friends in a time of struggle and fear, and he took bread and he blessed it and he gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. After supper, Jesus looked forward to your desired day of joy and power and he took a cup of wine and he blessed it and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. I will share this meal with you again in the reign of God. So share this bread and share this cup in memory of me. So together we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen and Christ will come again. Come now, Holy Spirit of God. As you were present in creation, be present now and let these gifts of bread and cup become for us the bread of life and the cup of blessing. As you were sent by Jesus to accompany us on our journey of faith, be present now and make this community in receiving this bread and cup one body in Christ. We become one body sometimes by those words that we speak, so we speak now the words of the Lord's Prayer, and this week I'll get them right. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. going to take communion in a moment the piece of music that you you know you might have listened to um I, I found by chance it's called wounded hands um and it made me think of the fact that actually yes jesus hands were wounded for us on the cross um but jesus hands were wounded too by the work and the graft, the healing, the time he spent on earth. Um, 
and he asks us to be his hand broken and wounded as we are so let's take communion together uh for the bread of christ body of christ broken for you blood of Christ shed for you. So stir up, O oh Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works may by you be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say our sending out prayer together. O oh God of kindness, send us out with more time for interruptions and more generosity for kindness so that you we might see you within these walls and beyond these walls. Amen. Crown him with many crowns. Uh, the notices are as they are in that sermon, really. Um, Gifts for Beesom, gifts for uh, Santa for a senior, any names of anybody who you think would benefit from one of those um, gifts from Santa, of the, uh, Santa for a senior. A more difficult one because it's actually asking you to be out there, but if anyone feels that they would like to do a day, um, a week, um, or could give some time to um, Cannons Grove, to the housing project, um, specifically to the volunteer and the lunches. But, you, you know, you never know what that turns into. Um, then then that's there's an opportunity for that also um, at the moment. Um, and then there are the things that we will be asking locally and around church, around worship, as we begin to see what what we will and we will not be allowed to do as we approach Christmas. Um, but if there's anything else or, or there is any anybody else that you're concerned about at this time, um, then do. Otherwise, keep tabs on neighbours, keep tabs on one another. Um, and, you know, I know that when people are keeping tabs on you too, that it's all part and parcel of... Um, of ministering to one another, ministering to Christ within our community. Um, Zoom coffee in 10 minutes, so I'm going to get off air so we can get to that. But before we go, just a blessing, a commission and a benediction. So go now and embrace the hope to which God has called us. Recognise Christ in friend and saviour. And as Christ has been gracious to you, so be gracious to those in need. And may God give you a place of rest on rich pastures. May Christ Jesus, the shepherd king who binds your wounds, and may the Holy Spirit give you wisdom and reveal to you the fullness of the one who fills all in all. And so we go. In the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And we go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. And we do. So for those of you joining us for Zoom Coffee, the codes are at the bottom of the service. Uh, it's been a joy to worship with you today uh, and speak soon. Uh, bye. <laughs>